Today I want to talk a little bit about hand quilting. So hand quilting can elevate a simple project that you get done with um, by just adding a bit of texture and personal touch to it. I really enjoy the process of hand quilting. A lot of times um, it's, it is just really therapeutic for me to slow down. Sometimes I can be kind of a fast quilter and I want to race through to see my top come together, but then um, the quilting part on my machine is not really that fun for me. So hand quilting is a way for me to still enjoy the process and slow down. Um, and it just keeps my hands busy um, and just gives my brain a little bit of a rest while I continue to work. So I wanna share with you a few of the things that I like to do um, and the way that I do it. Um, so watch the rest of the video and you can see. Okay, today I wanna to show you um, a few tips and tricks for doing big stitch hand quilting. And this is different than the hand quilting you might see on your grandmother or aunt's old quilts um, where the stitches are really, really tiny and fine and delicate. This is what we call big stitch hand quilting because the stitches are a little bit longer, the thread is a little bit thicker. It almost gives it a little bit of a slightly embroidered look and feel, I think. Um, and I really like it. I like the look that it gives it. I think it kind of gives it a bit of a modern um, take on an old skill. Um, and I just love the look of it in a quilt. I think it adds some really great texture. And when you wash it up, um, I love the look of that too. So the first thing I want to do is show you some of the things um, that tools that you might need in order to, to achieve um, this kind of look in a quilt. So the first thing is that I do is I use this DMC or some sort of pearl cotton and I like the size eight. Um, so with thread, it's numbered um, to where the lower the number, the thicker the thread is. So I also have five and 12. So my five is a thicker weight and my 12 is a thinner um, thread. So I really like eight. I like the size of it. I have an Aurifil, um I believe this is a size 12. Let's see. Yeah, I think that this is size 12. So you can see it's a little bit of a thinner. So when I want to do something that is a little bit, maybe smaller stitches, a little bit more delicate, then I like to use this size. But for the most part, I tend to stick to my DMC size 8 thread. Um, the other thing that you'll need is some good needles. And the ones that I really love, I, I left these in my package so you can see I got it at Hobby Lobby. Um, I really like this golden eye needle. And it, you can see it is an embroidery needle. This is not what every hand quilter would tell you to get. This is what I like. Um, so you can look at other hand quilters, see what they recommend. But these I find are thin enough um, to go through my layers of fabric. If I have fine fabrics, some fabrics like this is Birch Organics. Um, it's, it's just a really soft, um, feels like a tighter weave and a thinner needle helps to pass through it. But those eyes, they're pretty small, but they're still big enough that I can get my thicker thread through. So this is the needle that I like. They're the golden or gold eye embroidery needle, needles by Singer. And then you have to choose your thimble. <laughs> um, and as you can see, I have gone through a lot of thimbles to try to figure out which one I like best. This is like a rubber grip that you can get even just at an office supply store. Um, and it can actually help for pulling, it helps you grip your needle, um, but doesn't work great as a thimble. I did try it with these underneath it and that helped protect my finger a little bit. But with those sharper needles, you really do need some protection. I've never found these um, plastic ones to fit well, but they may work for you. Um, this is another, I think it's Singer, um, one that I believe I picked up at Hobby Lobby. Um, and I used it for a while. I tried this one, it's the Clover with the, um, I don't know what, what you would call that, like a little aluminum plate or something in it. It just never fit well, and, and this one is my absolute favorite. Um, it's a clover, 
it fits. I put it on my middle finger when I quilt. I'm a lefty, so I put it over here, and it fits so snug and perfect. Um, the problem is, is mostly, I can't find these in my local quilt shop, so I'm having to mostly buy it online, and it's a little tricky. So I have a little bit of bigger fingers. The medium worked well for me. If you are on the smaller size, you know, just try to gauge what you think you might need. So, um, yeah, so those are the tools. The last thing you need is some sort of small embroidery snips or just small scissors that are easy to have on hand. Okay, as you can see here, I've actually already started quilting. This is my iris quilt. Um, and you may notice it's pinned, so I pin basted. Um, but I did not actually mark my quilt. And the reason I didn't is because I am using these seam lines as kind of a guideline um, and trying to keep, I don't know, maybe that's a quarter of an inch. I'm kind of eyeballing. Um, but if you want to mark your quilt, you can use something like a hair marker or um, a water soluble pen and a ruler and go through and mark your lines just as you would with any quilting. You'll do that also with your hand quilt. I have my needle threaded. Um, I don't know how much length. It really is kind of up to you what you feel comfortable with. The longer it is, it, it can mean that you can get um, knots in it a little bit more, but it also means you don't have to um, knot and tie off over and over again. And so it kind of is a trial and error for you to feel like you can figure out what length feels best for you. So I usually leave about that much um, from my tail to my knot at the end. I just do a, a little quick knot here at the end of it, um, maybe a quarter of an eighth inch, maybe eighth, it doesn't really matter. Um, and I wanna show you how I start at the end of a row. So here, I've done this line um, and I wanna start over here. So I'm going to leave that pin in place until it bothers me just because it helps to keep it from shifting at all when I don't want it to move. So the first thing I do is I kind of, in between my, my top and my batting, I kind of pull my needle up and let my knot catch right there, okay? And I don't want to pull it too hard because your knot can pop through. Um, oh, and I need my thimble. Okay. So I'm a lefty, you're gonna see I don't use a hoop, I just like using my table um, nice and flat. I can even do this uh, in my lap when I'm watching a show with my kids or I do it sometimes in the car if we're taking a long car trip um, and I am just kind of bored. <laughs> um, this, this way is easy for me to rock my needle and not have it into a hoop where I just have struggled more to get good even stitches. Okay, so what I do is I kind of grab my hand underneath it and just kind of eyeball and rock my needle up and down and up and down and up. Okay, so I, I might try to get three or four stitches in. And then I gently pull through. Okay, and then I'm gonna go some more. And I just kind of keep gathering in this hand. And I'll show you what, what you can do once you get really into the middle of the quilt. It still works for me to not have a hoop or um, anything to be holding my fabric. starting to see some stitches. If it feels like it's starting to get a little tight, just kind of pull it down at the bottom to readjust and make sure it's not, your stitches aren't, aren't pulling too tight on the fabric. Okay, so here, I'm already feeling like this is getting to be a lot to grab. I don't want to be grabbing that much. So I, gra I put my hand up under my opposite hand. So for me, my right hand up under the quilt, and I just kind of pinch it right here, close to where I'm working so that my fingers under here are kind of helping still to guide it through. So I'm gonna take another little bite and go. And your stitches will get more even as you go, but this is some of the charm of hand quilting is that 
it's not the same as a machine stitch. Like, there's some charm to them being different sizes. Um, and so I'm gonna just keep moving down. I've pinched it again up underneath it. Okay, now I'm gonna do something here because you guys don't wanna sit here and watch me hand quilt this whole thing. <laughs> um, so I'm gonna show you, let's say I was out of thread right here and I needed to finish up. So what I do is I take my needle and I make a, a loop around it to where I'm gonna make a knot, okay? And I make my knot maybe a half an inch down from where, larger than a stitch length, okay? So look here, I've made a knot a bit farther than what I think my next stitch will be, okay? Now I take my needle, and going through only this top light layer right here, I'm gonna pop, I'm gonna take my needle through, don't hit your batting, and go farther than your knot is. That length should be farther, where you're coming through, should be farther than this length from the end of your thread to your knot. Pull it through. And when you hit your knot right there, you're gonna see it's kind of looped up. And what you're, we're gonna do here is pop that knot. And what I do is I tug gently and I kind of pick at it until it goes through. So my knot is right in there, so it's not gonna pull out. And then I can just snip, and, I'm, and I can start another thread length on my knee. Okay, now I wanna show you how you would start from a place like this, okay? So um, I have my thread, I have a knot at the bottom, one single knot, don't, don't knot it more than that. Because this is, at this point, it can be hard to get it to come through. So. I'm gonna take my needle and start in just through my top. I'm not going through all the layers, just through my top layer. I'm starting in, but I want to come out close to where my next stitch should be. So I'm gonna say about right there feels good. Okay, so then I pull my thread through, and again, right here, there's my knot, there's where my thread's coming through, and I'm gonna pop that knot. So again, I kind of gently pull and kind of scratch at it, <laughs> um, for lack of a better word, and there you can kind of scratch where those holes are and they, the fabric will just kind of go back to normal and then I can start. way down my row. And that's it. Um, the Really the biggest thing with hand quilting is just practicing your stitches. Once you learn those little tips of how to start and stop your, your thread, um, it really isn't super complicated. I've got a knot in here right now, <laughs> of course. Um, but it's really a pretty simple process and I think you'll find that you can add it in to a few special pieces. You can do a whole quilt. You can add it in with some, um, just like a, a touch here or there into a quilt. And it gives a really, really neat effect. Um, so you should try it out.